Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome, my Aries friends and friends of Aries. This is the Divine Phoenix Rising Tarot, and hey, I'm Zachary. Thank you guys for joining me here, and welcome to my table. So Aries, I missed you guys. Good to see you guys again. Um, do have some messages that came through in meditation. We'll look at oracle cards that were pulled and then get into your message into tarot as we do. So Aries, I'm going to be honest with you. This message, I was not, as it came through, um, I was not expecting it to mean what it is meaning so far. Um, there was a word that came through that actually, we'll get into it, but um is a movie that came out in 2009 and I thought it was I thought it had something to do with honestly like uh like an album that Lady Gaga made I think it's um Chimatica is what came through but I think like Chromatica or something is her album anyway I have never seen it I had to look into it to see what it was about let's dissect it because um interesting message let's see so the first thing that came through was questions and answers. Um, this just makes me feel like this is a time where this is you have questions and you're seeking answers, or maybe you have an answer and you're trying to find what the question is, which kind of makes sense with the um, subject matter of Chimatica. So Chimatica, Chimatic or Chimatica is what came through. Like I said, it is a um, movie or documentary, I guess, um, that came out in 2009. So I was looking at a bunch of different descriptions of, of what this is about, and um, it kind of made me nervous, I'll be honest, to to talk about it because I don't, I don't want to endorse that movie. Like, I don't know why this came through, you know what I'm saying? But it did. So there was actually a little blurb that I wrote down here that I wanted to read for you guys real quick. Uh, well, before that, actually, before I get into that, um, swollen lymph actually was something that came through after that. Not lymph node, but swollen lymph. Um, I find that very interesting. Like lymph fluid is very, very important in our system. I mean, everything that's going on in our system has some some sort of importance. Um but it made me think about, you know, is somebody sick? Um, based on what Chimatic uh, is about, this started to make a little bit more sense, so we'll get into it. So in spite of its visual, um, or excuse me, Chimatica is a rumination on how false ego and political economy enslave citizens, preventing them from achieving self-acceptance and to evolve as a species in the context of occult conspiracy theories, cons excuse me, occult conspiracy theories. For a change, the blame is on us for accepting the status quo. So, um, not to get into occult conspiracies, that's kind of where I was like, oh, okay, spirit, that's not that's not the can of worms I was hoping to open here today. But here we are. Um, <laughs> here we are. I take it more the message that's coming through there is this direction, like a mirror being placed in front of us saying... Um, there are many, many things that we as a population globally, um, and you can break that down into different areas as well, that we over time have um, really allowed to happen through lack of, of um, action, right? And I, this is not a call to action uh, that I know of yet. We'll get into the message, but um, I feel like what this message is saying right now um, and it's interesting, I'm recording this on the 4th of July here in the States, being Independence Day, but um, the message that's coming through here so far for me is a reminder of the importance uh, or the power, the weight that we actually have as an individual and then as we come together <laughs> as a fabric, a society, a community, um, the power that we truly have to exact change, um, to create many different things. Okay. I know there are a lot of, a lot of fingers being pointed in every direction these days and have throughout the history of time, time immemorial, right? Um, I like this message so far because it's, uh, instead of blame or shame, it's coming back and, and saying, um, a reminder, like, remember, remember Simba, <laughs> just how powerful we are individually and how much more powerful, powerful we are when we come together as a group. Okay, so light message here so far. Um, let's get into the oracle cards that came out. So there were a couple in the archetype, wild unknown archetype oracle deck that came through. The lover and the kiss. 
So I find this very interesting. Both of these cards in the book talk about um, merging, merging of the self to another, specifically in the lover, merging of the self to another. And in the kiss, this was, it just talks about merging with others. So this message of, like I said, coming together like a fabric or a community, um, I feel like, so the lover was the heart, beloved and devoted, the kiss, touch, chemistry, um, and the sex merging together, okay? I feel like it's, um, we're coming into a time where that is going to be, it is necessary to start stepping into the roles that we came here to play, which primarily is to work together, <laughs> I feel. And I feel that a lot of people feel that way too. So um, the other card that came out here was the Urban Crow Oracle deck, Ghosts. I find this super interesting as well. So Ghosts here talks about um, essentially like old programs that come up. The ghost, um, the ghost of an event, of a person, something that comes up into our cognizance that, that starts this chain reaction of um, chemicals essentially being released in our system memories, emotions, thoughts, putting us back in this place of experiencing the same thing over and over again. So it could symbolize like trauma. Um, what I'm getting from this in combination with the rest of the message here is this is a reminder that uh, I'm just getting a strong push here that we're being asked to, to break free from some old programming. Um, the old programming being... Uh, I don't know. We don't have power. We don't have the ability to make changes here. Things are the way they are. So that's the way that they have to be. Um, I'm not presenting like a plan step A, you know, one, two, three, this is how that change is made. Uh, but what is coming through is that change starts with the understanding, the knowledge that it is possible. <laughs> and that starts with us owning our own power our own ability to make change here, okay? Okay, so Aries, let's get into your tarot messages here. Exciting message, I, like I said, I wasn't expecting, wasn't expecting it to go this direction. So Spirit, what do we have here for Aries? And this is the, uh, this may hurt tarot, we'll be using here first, Aries, Aries. Hello to all my channel members, you guys, shout out, huge shout out, thank you for your love and support as always. If you are interested in becoming a channel member yourself, there is a join button right next to the subscribe or a link in the description of the video as well. And I do have personal readings open and available currently. If you're interested in that, there's a link in the description of the video. You can check out my website if you want. Which one? So six of swords here at the bottom. This is uh, hopes. This is our hopes here. Hopes and dreams. Um, Six of Swords is a transition, you guys, really. It's moving from moving from something that's been difficult to uh, somewhere where there's peace. Could literally be from a war-torn area, somewhere where there is that kind of major unrest. Um, it can symbolize, like, immigration from places where there are war-torn situations uh, to a place where there is safety or peace travel by water. I feel like mostly though, you guys are hoping to move out of the yuck. You're hoping to move away from where things have been painful, to leave the snake behind, whoever the snake is here for you guys. Okay, let's keep moving forward. So we're going to use the wild unknown tarot here for your second deck. Spirit, what do we have here for Aries? Additional messages. And this is a general message, you guys, please keep that in mind. You are extremely intelligent. You are a powerful co-creator here. So please keep that in mind. Use your head, heart, and intuition to decipher which messages are for you and leave the rest behind. Feel free to check out your rising moon, Venus, any other major placements in your chart for a more complete picture of what's going on in your story. We do have every sign in our chart. It just depends on which house. So I encourage you guys to look into that as well. Ten of Pentacles. So this is your fear aversion. Ten of Pentacles here. This is, um, well, everything that you could ever want, really. Ultimate material and spiritual abundance. Building and leaving a legacy. It could be a connection to your community, too. I feel like having this transition, Six of Swords being in your hope here, 
and this being in your fear, there's a concern over achieving this. There's a fear that maybe this isn't possible or this, you know, connecting to the rest of the message here too. Things have been this way for so, whatever this way is. Is this possible as well? Is this utopia, <laughs> you know, possible? I do think it is, okay? There's a lot of power in what we can create when we come together. Yeah. Be not afraid. Okay, Aries? Let's get into this. So to start, <laughs> speaking of power, in your general here, you guys have the emperor, which is also you. <laughs> so I do feel like you're being highlighted here in your own reading. Um... But power, like I said, this is this is control too. It can be unhealthy control. I feel like this is talking about the process of shifting things. If you are in a state where you're using your power or others may be using your power right now in unhealthy ways, um, this is a, a wake-up call to start shifting that. How do we shift that? Awareness, you guys. Awareness is the first step to everything. Any change starts with awareness. It starts with the thought. If we can't see with our brain, if we can't see the reality of something, then how do we adjust it? How do we change it? The emperor here knows that in order to rule in a healthy way, they must also have a healthy relationship to the empress, the divine feminine. This is the divine masculine here. So I do feel a big part of this process here as we are working to heal the divine feminine globally within every single one of us, no matter what your bits and baubles are. Um, that is kind of the highlight here. That's the highlight of focus. We have to take the throne, our own personal throne, our collective throne. But in order to do that, we need to be okay with diving into the depths of the shadow, the divine feminine realm where that fertility for creation and manifestation exists. The intention, the emperor here, the thought, is what the, the conscious realm, is what pregnates, impregnates the divine feminine, the unconscious realm, to manifest. So we're starting at the beginning with a thought. How are you thinking? Are you trapped in programs and mechanisms from the past are ghosts coming up and causing you to replay the same program over and over again. If that's the case, the call to action here is to work on being present. If we're not present, then we can't really like see something for what it is, right? And there's so many things in our world that are pulling that very powerful energy from us or trying to. We're constantly being pulled away from the present moment. Why? Because our power is in the present moment. If we're stuck in the past, depression, we have a really hard time manifesting in the ways that we ought to. If we're stuck in the future, anxiety, again, same thing, very difficult to manifest the world that we deserve to live in, right? So, call to be present. Uh, Father of Wands comes in to clarify this next. The viper. <laughs> the snake here, that did come through um, your six of swords. The snake is standing out to me here. I feel like this is your ghost. Whatever this ghost is that keeps coming up, you're trying to get away from. I kind of see, um, <clears throat> Father wants, it is like a leading leadership kind of quality. But I'm getting, I don't know if you've seen those pranks where people tie like a fake snake to their sh someone's shoes or something with fishing line. And then they see it and they start trying to run away, but it keeps following them. What I'm getting from that is, um, is the program here. This snake isn't actually attached to you. This person possibly, um, whoever this message is for is not still a part of your life, but you're running from it as if it's still connected to you. But if you were to stay present for just a moment, take a breath, you would see that maybe the snake only moves when you do, right? Starting to see that there's something off about the way that the snake is chasing you. Um, that's a part of that, I feel like. But also the leadership quality, like I said. You're being asked to lead. 
yourself first. To take that power back in the present moment, like I said, okay? Okay, so good stuff here for you, Aries. We have the star coming through first. This is renewed hope. Make a wish, receive a wish, right? The thing with the star is um, we receive this gift from spirit. We receive this renewed hope when we decide to connect. Again, being brought back to the present moment here. This is crucial really always <laughs> to be able to come to the present moment. Um, are there times where, you know, shifting into the past or the future are necessary? Yeah, I think so. But for the most part, we're meant to be here to experience the present moment. So this is connecting our chakras, aligning our chakras in such a way that we're connected to the earth and that we're connected to the divine as well. We have one foot on the land here and one in the water. We're staying grounded while we explore our emotional realm, that divine feminine, like I was saying earlier. So being in your good stuff here, I feel like this is um, the... Pro the prize comes when you pause. Interesting. Whatever this, um, the wish is irrelevant. Interesting. Okay. The wish is irrelevant. So it's, okay. It's the renewed hope that is important. This is the gift here. What I'm getting is, um, like as we're talking about change and that sort of thing, it's very difficult to want to do anything <laughs> if we have no hope, right? And I feel like that's intentional in a lot of ways. A population that is considerably lacking in hope um, is a lot easier to keep under lock and key. You know what I mean? Um, so there's a request here to connect with the earth, always. It's something I've actually been doing on a daily basis here for the last several weeks. And uh, I've noticed a huge improvement, you guys, in many different things, especially, um, I mean, just feeling more grounded, but uh, sleep. <laughs> sleep has been insanely improved. Um, my pain, I've got a lot of inflammation in my body too. Uh, my skin has been starting to clear up as well. I feel like it's crucial, you guys, to connect with the earth, to literally get your feet out there and ground. I do also, I also got like um, grounding sheets for my bed and like a grounding mat for when I'm on the couch. So I'm grounded as much as I possibly can. And that message is coming through here. In order to connect with the divine, in order to handle what it is that the divine is giving to you, you must be grounded here. That's where this alignment starts. So start aligning, okay? Renewed hope is the gift. Five of Cups comes through here to clarify. This is disappointment. Something's been lost. Um, regret. Denial comes through here too. But being in the good stuff, I feel like this is, um, this is the solution here. Aligning in this way to, this is like the ghost, I feel like too. That Five of Cups. This is what is from, from your past here that keeps you in your past. And that is keeping you going back to regret, disappointment. This will eat you up. And if this is you, it is. It's taking away opportunities for you to experience peace and joy, comfort, relaxation, and grace. I feel like this is something that um, having renewed hope be the gift here. There is something that's been eating you, eating you up. And I did kind of get the feeling with the lover and the kiss. For some of you, this could be a relationship from the past. Um, that is a part of this too. Maybe that is the ghost by Justin Bieber. <laughs> there is somebody who is playing the ghost here in your experience. So um, the remedy to the five of cups here too is to recognize that you do still have two cups here that haven't been spilled. That there is a need to turn away from magnifying what it is that you feel disappointed on. Because like the ghost talks about, every single time that you bring that up, there is, the brain doesn't know time, okay? It will start to fire and release the chemicals that mimic that exact 
emotional response you had in the moment that whatever happened, regret and disappointment, takes you right back there. It might as well be happening at the same time. There is no difference as far as, you know, we can tell with doing brain scans. It lights up the same spots. We have the same emotional response. So uh, being present, again, is coming through, you guys. Grounding and being in the present moment. This is the cure to what ails you, to what ails us. So what's in the dark? <laughs> what's in the dark, what you don't see coming? Hmm. Five of Cups. You just had that in your good stuff. So you're being given the instructions on how to, to turn here. You're focused on the three cups that have been spilled. You're being given the instructions on how to turn to the other two cups. Those three cups that have spilled contained a liquid that at one time you preferred, you wanted, but you lost a taste for. So there's this hyper focus or fixation that's going on over what's been lost, almost like um, you are glamorizing um, what happened. It wasn't ever as good as you're making it seem to be right now, and you're being asked to pay attention to that. Like you're robbing yourself, being in the dark here, what you don't see is that you're robbing yourself of positive interactions in the present and the future by continuing to pine for whatever has been lost here in the past. I'm not saying that there isn't valid hurt and pain and grief that may be surrounding that. There is a need to allow those emotions to flow though. And if there's a continual effort to go back to um, replaying that in your mind or your heart, then um, like I said, you're taking away your own choices in the future. So don't do that, Aries, okay? <laughs> you deserve happiness as well. And you're more than capable of approaching this, okay? Two of Swords comes through here next. Being at a crossroads, a decision needing to be made. Um, being between a rock and a hard place. What you don't see is that there, there are um, major events, thoughts, feelings that are keeping you pinned in a place where uh, you feel stuck. Because these feel like they're necessary. Um, and they may be, you know, like needing to pay bills, needing to eat, you know, there are things that are weighty that are making it difficult for you to see that there's a need to approach this. And so there's the cycle that just carries on. Um, and from the beginning of the message, like I was saying too, I feel like that's intentional, okay? <laughs> the powers that were, <laughs> or whatever you wanna call them, um, because things are shifting. Control and, and keeping the population in a place where there's constant fear was always the goal, right? Right now, with the clouds parting here, Spirit is trying to express that a new day is dawning. There is a new portal here that you are allowed to go through. But this requires, um, the way this is sitting here on the table too, like you've got your back turned to this here. If you were to turn to the things, start expressing gratitude for the things that you do have and that you do appreciate and enjoy about your life, you're then also going to see this portal. But until you turn from that, this is going to continue to feel like you're in between a rock and a hard place. Okay? So your obstacle here in this situation, you have Page of Cups to start. Page of Cups here is, um, there is the component of needing to, to ground what it is that you want from your future, bring that into the present moment. There's a need to ground that into this reality by taking active steps to make that a reality. This could look like, because um, what I think about is, you know, well, I want to do these things, but I am just so tired all the time, or I don't, I can't do this, or I can't do that. Um, how are you taking care of your body here, your vehicle? Are you eating in a fairly healthy way? Are you making sure you're hydrated? How's your sleep? These are things that really should be um, 
number one in our lives. Nobody can do that for us. And the longer that we go not tending to those details, the more that we don't have energy to do things, the more that our mental health does take a hit. Is there exercise? Are you meditating? You know what I mean? I think a lot of the time, uh, I've noticed this even in my own life when I'm not doing that, I will, that will come up. Spirit's like, oh, are you doing these things? And if I'm not feeling well, um, I just go, well, that's not, that's not the problem. But it is. <laughs> a lot of the times it is. Because that directly translates to the way that we experience stress too. And stress, cortisol, produces inflammation in our system. <laughs> and inflammation causes all of our problems. Which, by the way, is something that grounding, earthing, actually helps remove inflammation. So back to being present and grounding as well, you guys. The difficulty here is feeling overwhelmed emotionally to get to that place where you know you need to look at those things. Your diet, your sleep, your stress level, all of this. Three of Wands comes through here next. Expansion. Um, eye to the horizon is something that's coming out here too. I feel like there is, mm, there's such a desire, like you see your ship out in the distance here on the horizon and um, you're ready for that to come in, of course. What's being missed here in this process of looking, looking out too far is the few steps that are in front of you. If you have to swim out to that boat <laughs> or that ship, do you even have the energy to do so? Eating, sleeping, like I said, all those things. That's, that is what's building your energy level here to get you to a place where you can bring this into reality, where you can bring the ship closer to you. Okay, Aries, I love you guys. I'm going to pull a spirit animal oracle card here, and then I'm going to move into the extended portion. If you want to join me, um, there will be links in the description of the video. What do we have here for Aries, please? Final messages. The mouse. So anxiety is something that's really coming through here, you guys, um, which makes me feel like <laughs> the golden egg here at the bottom, the heart chakra. Um, The mouse here represents this anxiety that overtakes us, very like Virgo energy, getting hyper fixated or focused on something. And this is typically in the future, like I was saying, with depression being in the past, anxiety in the future. If you're experiencing a lot of anxiety right now, um, and I'm not superseding anything that medical professionals may be sharing with you, okay? I have experienced um, mass amounts of anxiety and panic throughout my life too. And I can say from personal experience that it comes when I am working to live in the future. And the reason why I've done that in the past is because it's a trauma response. In trying to prepare for every single thing that's possible, we're hurting ourselves, right? Um, hormonal injury is real. <laughs> Cortisol will do everything up to killing you. So this is just a reminder here to, again, come back to the present moment. Take care of yourself in the present moment here. This is step one. Everything else will start to become more clear and approachable when you choose to start bringing yourself into the present moment. And that's going to take some time to help calm the system down too. So please be patient and compassionate and kind with yourself too as you're going through this process. Okay, Aries? I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for joining me here in the general. Like I said, if you want to join me in the extended, links are in the description. I do have private readings available. Again, if you want to check that out, please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Um, all great ways to support the growth of this channel, you guys, and I truly, truly appreciate it. I do have my Cash App and PayPal links in the description. If you do feel called to tip or donate, I truly appreciate it, you guys. It does support the channel and goes a long way. And to those that do, I truly appreciate it. Love you, love you. So if this is where I leave you, thanks for joining me, you guys. I will see you all very soon. Oh, and the extended, we go into direct messages from your higher self, love and advice, career and advice, and what is most likely being manifested for you currently, okay? 
So take care of yourself. I will see you guys soon. All right. Be well.